Hey, wellness crew, and welcome to Yoga with Jenna. I am so excited that you're joining me today for today's practice, and I am definitely looking forward to it. I will let you know I am a little bit under the weather, so if there's any edits in this video, that'll be why. <laughs> so just wanted to let you guys know. Okay, so we're going to start with sun salutations. We're going to go ahead and lift our arms up overhead, breathing in, doing a swan dive, falling forward into a forward fold, relaxing the neck, walking our hands forward into plank, hovering so only the palms of our hands, the balls of our feet, and our toes are in contact with the mat, nothing else is. I've made this joke before, I'll make it again, unless it's your super long hair. <laughs> and coming up into Upward Dog. Tucking our toes underneath for Downward Dog. Stepping our left foot forward, the right one meets it, forward fold. Slowly rolling up. Coming into airplane, coming back up, coming in to chair, and back into mountain pose. So going ahead and falling forward into a forward fold, stepping your feet back to get into plank, getting into hovering. Upward dog, having our shoulders back and down as much as possible, tucking our toes underneath for downward dog, relaxing the neck, stepping one foot forward, the other foot meets it, forward fold, slowly rolling up. Coming in to airplane position, hinging forward from the hips, coming back up, swinging our arms backwards, and coming into chair. From chair, we're going to go ahead, come back into mountain pose, take a nice deep breath, and fall forward into forward fold, stepping our feet back so we can get into plank. Hovering. Upward dog. Tucking our toes underneath for downward dog. Relaxing the neck. Really pushing through the palms of your hands. Stepping one foot forward, the other foot meets it. Forward fold, slowly rolling up, coming into airplane position, hinging forward from the hips, our knees are slightly bent, coming back up, swinging our arms back around behind us, coming into chair, and from there, straightening out our legs, coming back into mountain pose. and falling forward into a forward fold. Stepping our feet back so we can get into plank. Coming into hovering. Coming into upward dog. Tucking our toes underneath to get into downward dog, relaxing the neck. Stepping one foot forward, the other foot meets it, forward fold. Slowly rolling up, coming into airplane, hinging from the hips, coming back up, reaching back, nice long extended arms, coming into chair. From there, we're going to do a chair flow. I'm 
whenever I get quiet, it's because I'm counting. <laughs> Two more. Coming back into that mountain pose, we're gonna go ahead and do a flow of airplane. So hinging forward from the hips, our, uh, the top of our body should be parallel to the mat and coming back up. Two more. Very good. All right, we're going to go ahead and get into tree pose. So you can have the arch of your foot in, like, in between your ankle, in between your calf, or above your knee. You can start in prayer pose. But eventually I want you to extend your arms out and open like a tree, which is why this is called tree pose. And going ahead and relaxing. Being on our right leg, bringing that left foot to wherever it is comfortable for us. If you want to start in the prayer position, by all means, go ahead. Eventually extending into tree. All right, awesome. From there, we're gonna go ahead and get into crow. So having the palms of our hands on our mats, bringing our knees up nice and high, having our toes up off the ground and balancing on the palms of our hands. And bringing our toes back into touching the mat. Taking a few deep breaths, because we are gonna do crow position, two, or crow pose two more times. All right, bringing the palms of our hands to our mats. And bringing our feet back, or our toes back to the ground. Shaking our arms out just a little bit. Getting our palms back on our mats, our legs positioned. All right, awesome. Okay. So now let's go ahead and get into saddle position. We're gonna go ahead, have our butt in between our heels, 
coming back onto our forearms and our elbows. If this is a good enough stretch for you in your quads, by all means, stay right here. If you want a further stretch, go ahead and bring your back all the way back down onto the mat. Nice deep breaths. All right, scooching up onto our elbows and our forearms, coming up out of the saddle position. We're gonna go ahead and come back into plank to downward dog, to plank, to knees, kiss the mat. Downward dog, plank, knees, kiss the mat, downward dog, Plank, knees, kiss the mat, and downward dog. Two more. From here, we're gonna go ahead and bring our right foot forward so we can get into a lunge position or a lizard position, whichever you prefer. Bringing that right foot back, coming back into plank position, going ahead, kissing our knees to the mat, and coming into downward dog. Four more. Bringing that left foot forward, coming into a low lunge or a lizard position. Either way is good for me. <laughs> And bringing that left foot back, going ahead, coming back into that plank position, knees kiss the mat, and into downward dog.
two more. From here, we're gonna bring our knees to the mat, come into child's pose. We're gonna go ahead and get onto our right side. We're gonna get onto our right forearm. And what we're gonna do is side planks, but flowing. So as we come up, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 and 12. All right, we're gonna to switch to our left side. Same thing, flowing side plank. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 and 12. Coming back onto our right side. So our feet are stacked, our legs are stacked. All we're doing is lifting up our hip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And switching sides to our left hand side. Our feet are stacked, our legs are stacked, and lifting up those hips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. All right, from here, we're gonna go ahead and come into full bow. So we're gonna grab our ankles, lift our chest and our legs up off of the mat. And relaxing them back down, widening our legs, coming into seal. So our shoulders are back and down, our palms are against the mat. And if this is too much of an arch for you in your lower back, you can always go onto your forearms. All right, from there, we're gonna go ahead and reach our knees out. So you can have your heels directly below your knees. You can even have them in a little bit closer, getting onto our forearms. And when you want more of a stretch, pushing back. Now this position, we are gonna hold for a little bit. because a lot of us have so much tightness in our inner thighs. This has been repeated to me in emails. <laughs> this has been something that keeps on coming up. So I always try to incorporate stuff for the inner thighs, the groin area. But in all honesty, if you have a tight psoas like I do, which is a muscle that's about like right there, um, or, they're on each side. 
you can get a lacrosse ball and you'll be like, you know, kind of laying on your stomach, but you'll have that lacrosse ball right over your psoas. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it is some brutal, but deeply needed love and care for that muscle so that muscle can release. I've been to Arosti. They fixed me up really good. So I'm a huge fan of Arosti. Um, but where I live now, there's no Arosti places to go to. So um, the lacrosse ball has been a lifesaver. Um, voodoo banding as well. It won't work for the psoas, but it will definitely work for your thighs, for your calves. It even works on your feet, your arms. Um, so if you want to look up voodoo banding and see what that entails, um, it's pretty cool. I believe I've shown it on one of my videos, if not two of them. All right. And then from here, we're just going to go ahead and push forward to get out of frog. Okay. We're going to be sitting on our heels and all we're going to do is lift our left arm up overhead, have our right palm down, but really pay attention to the location of your shoulder and your ear. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna switch sides. And what we're doing is getting a nice side bend stretch. Since we did um, work to kind of stretch out our abdominal muscles, we also want to stretch out our obliques, which are also our abdominal muscles, but are a little bit more difficult without doing a side bend or some type of uh, twisting position. All right, we'll do two more. Last one. Okay, so let's go ahead, get back into plank position. I know you're like, but we just stretched out our stomachs. I know, I know. I'm going to change my mind. Okay. So what we're going to do is bring our right knee to our right elbow, our left knee to our left elbow, right knee towards our nose, left knee towards our nose. That's two. We're going for 12. That's three. That's four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. We'll go for 10. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so from there, we're gonna go ahead and get into full on bridge. So we're gonna do full on bridge a total of three times. Yes, you can see my sweat everywhere. <laughs> okay, so three times a bridge, I always count either just like by counting or by using my breath. When I do bridge, I use my breath. So we will do it for as long as my allotted time is. And we're gonna do the total of three times. So coming onto the palms of our hands and onto our feet. Ooh. 
and coming back down. And why are we doing bridge now? Because we went ahead and added in an extra um, piece of core work. So in yoga, you want to try to balance things out. Balance movements out with opposing movements. So because we were crunching up and tightening up our abdominal muscles, in bridge, we're lengthening. All right, coming up for the second one. And relaxing down. It's also good because you're still working on strengthening up your arms. The next thing I want to try is straight leg bridge. We're not going to do it in this video, but I'm going to try solo and make sure I can do it, and then <laughs> I'll present it to the masses. <laughs> okay. And final bridge. And relaxing down. We're going to go ahead. We're going to come into puppy dog. So our knees and our hips are stacked over each other. You can have your forearm, or you can have your forehead on the mat, or if you're extra flexy, you can have your chin on the mat. There are times when I don't have my chin on the mat only because I have makeup on. <laughs> Really reaching with those palms. And we're going to walk our hands in so we are in tabletop position. We're going to go ahead and do cat cow. So lifting up our heads and our butts as we inhale. And as we exhale, letting the crown of our head fall to the fall towards the mat and our back arches. Perfect. From there, we're going to go ahead and thread the needle. So we're going to have our left arm come underneath where our right palm is in that hole where our um, wrist and our elbow are through there for a nice spinal or upper back, at least, twist, as well as a shoulder stretch. And going ahead and switching sides. Well, before we do that, let's go ahead and do cat cow again. So again, lifting your head and your butt as you inhale. As you exhale, lowering your head towards the mat and arching your back. And 
and going ahead and threading that needle, bringing that right arm through, bringing that left palm closer to you if you would like. And perfect. All right, we're going to go ahead and come into a seated position. Oh, let me fix my mat real quick. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and bring our feet together in what some may call an ankle bind. So what you're going to do is you're going to fall forward. You can reach out with your arms if you would like. You're going to let that head relax. Unless you don't want to be looking and smelling your toes, I completely understand. And slowly coming up, we're going to go ahead and get onto our left knee while extending our right leg out, coming into that half split, allowing your neck to relax. And then going ahead, bringing that knee back so you can get into whatever a full split looks like for you. And then from there, bending the right knee, coming into pigeon. So going ahead and starting either on the palms of your hands, coming onto your forearms, bringing your forehead to your forearms or extending your arms out and bringing your forehead to the mat. And walking our hands back in, we're going to go ahead, bring that right knee back, bring that left leg forward, and come into half split. Relaxing the neck. All right, now going ahead, extending that, left, that right knee back a little bit and maybe that left heel forward more to come into whatever a full split looks like for you. And 
and bending that left knee so we can come into pigeon again you can start on the palms of your hands coming to your forearms let me scoot back just a little bit coming on to your forearms if that's still not enough bringing your forehead to your forearm and if that is still not enough extending your arms straight and bringing your forehead to the mat And walking our hands back in. And coming into Shavasana. So having our feet spread apart, our legs lightly spread apart. Having our arms beside our bodies. If you want the um, intention of receiving, go ahead and set it and face your palms toward the sky so that way you can receive whatever it is that the universe or your higher power wants to provide to you and sometimes even what happens is we'll get insight from ourselves insight that maybe we weren't expecting or maybe we'll sometimes just get a question answered so always trying to be in that open receptive position mentally and as well as showing it physically right not being closed off but being open it is key to receiving the things that you want to receive in life and having immense gratitude like you can have today for completing this practice that your body allowed you to. We're gonna break code a little bit with Shavasana. We're gonna bring the bottoms of our feet together. We're gonna try to open up our knees as much as we can without using our hands. Nice deep breaths. And then scooching those heels even closer towards your bottom, still trying to open up those knees as wide as you can without using any force from your hands. Extending those legs straight back out. and setting an intention for today setting whatever time you're doing this at setting an intention for what today is going to look like or setting an intention for how tomorrow is going to be being proud of yourself that you worked at strengthening your core today. That you're taking steps towards improving your health and improving your well-being, which is all that I want for you. We're going to go ahead and extend one of our arms out. Going ahead, coming into a seated position, whatever that looks like for you, that's totally fine. You can probably see my sweat marks. <laughs> but I am so glad that you joined me for today's practice. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and or follow. Sorry I'm a little bit under the weather. I do apologize. But I will be back at it again in full force as soon as I can. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Be well. Stay wild.